Good morning, folks. We've been watching a giant plasma filament crest over the northeastern limb and enter the Earth-facing disk. For those who are new here, these plasma filaments make up about half the observed solar eruptions that send plasma out into space, like this back in 2012. They are just as dangerous as sunspots. And that's why, when these monsters enter the Earth-facing positions, we pay very close attention. Without the warning of a solar flare, these solar tornadoes can destabilize, lift, and release, which is currently our top alert on the sun. The eruption watch for this filament begins today. Now while we watch that big filament top left, we notice a lot of surface features on the disk, but none of them are geo-effective at this time. Our lone eruption yesterday came from the southwestern quadrant, quick pop, small ejecta, and not at all heading in Earth's direction. The X-ray solar flares remain very low. This is unlikely to change today unless the departing spots pop one or two, but even then we've gotten almost nothing else on the disk. Only one active region slated to appear soon. The bright fields can be seen just behind the limb there. Solar wind. Got some density fluctuations as the plasma speed edges up this morning, but also folks, up in blue there's the twirling phi angle we've been waiting for to call a potential SSBC event. Need another day or so to be sure. Meanwhile the density jolts are bringing back only slight perturbations on the electron flux, Earth's magnetic shield having a calm start to the day. In 211 angstroms, you clearly see the dark coronal holes. They jumped up in power overnight from blue with hints of green to green with hints of yellow. It begins facing Earth today. I just hope we've released enough pressure in the last week to avoid another rough earthquake period. Speaking of which, here's the footage of that avalanche at Everest triggered by that terrible Nepal quake hitting the campers. Folks, the death toll here keeps surging up and up. We are well over 3,000 confirmed dead now, and we're just nowhere near having uncovered everything. Aftershocks are complicating the situation along with overcrowded hospitals and resource supply issues. Remember Haiti 2010. It's not over when the ground stops moving. Unfortunately, we also have to monitor the particle release from that Chilean volcano from last week as it begins to spread across the southern hemisphere. Updates coming as needed. Let's go to the top articles. We love anything exoplanet related here at the Observers, and this, the first ever visible light data return, changes the future outlook significantly. We've also got a piece on how cosmic tsunami shockwaves can turn aging galactic material into little star-forming jitterbugs once more. It's a top recommendation. Folks, there is no pleasure to be had from an accurate severe alert forecast when the damage and danger gets like it has been getting in the south. There's no way to ignore these storms if they come through your area, and tonight they've decided to extend their stay in the south-central states. The convergence is not going to move much. I'd check your local forecasts after lunch today, but suffice to say, it's going to be rough. In Europe, our top concerns are a northern low-pressure cell and the converging flows off the Mediterranean. The southern bits could bring severe thunderstorms to the region, possibly even a tornado. Eyes on it. Down under, we see high pressure, which almost always means a nice sunny day. But the low end convergence to the east at New Zealand is another story. Purple precipitation alerts tell that same tale. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Scroll down, click the links, dive a bit deeper on your own. Eyes open. No fear. It's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.